Minister, thank you for making time. We saw from Friday onward the security cluster ministers announce a series of interventions aimed at disarming communities, ensuring law and order and so on. But we also noted that many people felt that this was an attempt to um, curb the democratic rights of communities and of workers. Um, you have now had a few days of this actions. Um, has the police been able to bring the situation under control? Firstly, <coughs> thank you very much for and good evening. The, it is important for us to understand that there's no right of an individual which is being, or a group of people which is being subverted as a result of police action. The statement from the police was very clear that they're only going to deal with those issues which are illegal in themselves and uh, there's no right which is, uh, is illegal and which can be claimed by any, any individual. So therefore there's no um, subversion of any rights. Obviously uh, people are likely to complain if sometimes the police uh, begin to act in the manner in which they've been inst uh, instructed to act. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we know that the police went into um, some of the hostels where the workers live and raided them um, and, and seized quite a few, um, you know, handmade weapons. But in that raid, people felt that their rights were being violated. We saw families of, of workers um, expressing being traumatized at the manner in which the police entered their homes. How are you going to balance, Minister, the um, responsibility that you have as government to obviously uh, maintain law and order by but, uh, to not use that um, to abuse people's rights? Obviously, in a situation like that where the police have to go and do uh, search and seizure operations, particularly in search of weapons which are illegal themselves, uh, which some of them might be used or have been used to, to intimidate or to, <coughs> to injure uh, other, other individuals, uh, in, the, in the conduct of those operations, there are likely to be areas where there can be infringements of something, but it's not the intention of the police to do that. It may happen in the operational situation, but if there are issues like those, those issues need to be raised, I think the police will have uh, the responsibility to address them. Now, of course, um, we <coughs> saw today the expelled Youth League, uh, former Youth League President Julius Malema being denied entry to address workers. Um, there's been a lot of talk in the media that, uh, you know, the Hawks is in fact in investigating him for incitement. Do you think that a law and order response to the crisis is really going to go to the heart of addressing, you know, the socioeconomic issues of the miners and, of course, the wage talks that seem to be stuck at the moment? The, the, the actions by the police is to stabilize the situation so that proper negotiations could, and, uh, could take place without any form of intimidation. If people gather, they march, and if they, the status legal, they don't carry weapons, they're not intimidating anybody, there's no way the police can intervene mm -hmm. in those areas. Two, you know that from the start of the, of the after the shooting of the miners who died or the, work, or the people who died there, not all of them have been miners anyway. Uh, but from the start of that, there are lots of people who have been moving to address, to address these workers. Um, and some of them have not been very helpful in the manner in which they have been handling the situation. So it's not only Julius Malim. Uh, the statement by the, by, the, by, by the government said, we are going to, to investigate as to whether are there individuals who can be charged or who can be found to have uh, violated the laws in terms of incitement to, to violence. In that era, so it's not only it's not Julius Malim. It's anybody, whether you say you're a union leader or anybody who does that, is going to be uh, to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, <coughs> the um, the shooting of the 34 mine uh, workers or people who gathered, some of whom were mine workers, uh, was after 10 people had already been killed. Many people were wondering why it took the state so long to react, given that 10 people had already died and that. Um, Previously, we had a strike at another mine where there was also violence. Um, in the government's assessment of, of the entire matter, is there a realization on your part that you could have acted earlier? It, it, would, <coughs> it would depend as to what acting earlier would mean, because you must remember that two of the, of the first eight who have been killed were police themselves. So it means police were there um, taking care of the situation. Unfortunately, some of them died in the process. So the government has been there, the government has been acting to try and, 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 and stabilize the situation and avoid incidences where people will just be killed uh, willingly. Unfortunately, the incident which uh, led to the death of many people there happened. 
but the government have been there. The government have been dealing with the situation. Mm -hmm. Now you lead the <coughs> interministerial committee, which is a, a, a group of uh, ministers ranging from yourself to the labour minister, the minister responsible for mineral resources, all seized with the with the matter. Uh, give us an update. The last time we heard at the cabinet Lekhotla, you had decided to divide yourself into task teams to deal with separate components that that make up the crisis. Where are you guys at with with the work that you're doing? We, we, as, as we said, the, the, the first responsibility was to try and assist the families of those who passed away and look for those who are in hospital and to try to make sure that area has been, has been catered for. So that has been done. We are continuing the services in, in, through the Department of Social Development to provide psychosocial services to families who, are, who ranges from Lesotho, Swaziland, and many of them in the Eastern Cape and some in the Northwest. We have attached social workers to each of the families. We will be receiving a report tomorrow from the teams which we said they need to go and look at the profiles of these families so to see what type of intervention and assistance they could get the survivors of, of, of those who died. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, there was a group uh, which is led by the Department of Labor which has to facilitate the negotiation process and we think that has been done. The negotiations are continuing. There may be issues here and there's the nature of negotiations to do that. But that process is, is, is continuing and hopefully uh, the mine, the mine uh, owners and the workers will be able to find each other in mm -hmm. terms of what needs to be done. Now, of course, one of the glaring <coughs> issues um, that the entire saga <coughs> exposed was the living conditions of mine workers. And of course, we know that we have charters that um, is meant to guide and navigate the way in which companies contribute to the social well-being of workers. The president in parliament uh, last week took Lonman to task for lagging, what the president said was lagging behind in terms of other companies of what they provide. What is government saying to business and in particular to Lonman to um, bring, you know, take their responsibility serious. You've urged workers to go back to the negotiations table. You've asked communities to be patient. But what pressure is government putting on Lonman, um, who seriously has not been able to comply or have refused to comply with the charter? We, we are not only uh, talking to Lonman, uh, as you said, that this is, is, is an issue. The issue of the implementation of the charter is something which has been is being discussed between the Department of Mineral Resources and the, and the mining uh, companies, that they need to comply with the charter. There are penalties if you don't comply with the charter, and I think now the department will go ahead to enforce uh, the provisions of the charter so that every company should be able to comply, and hopefully um, loan men as part of those who are supposed to comply, they will, they will do so. They have, not, they have not refused to say to us that we can't implement the charter. Yeah. But for they're the taking their time. For the fact that they're taking their time, that is what we need to address. That because they're they not the only one. A number of companies have not been moving at the same pace as would need them to do that. And we're saying they need to up the scale. They need to implement the charter quite, quite fast so that we can be able to address some of the issues. Minister, thank you so much. We unfortunately have run out of time. That was Minister Collins Chabani, in, a minister in the presidency responsible for monitoring and evaluation, discussing government's efforts to stabilize the labor unrest in South African mines.